Welcome back, Flair and Songbird community. I guess you all had a swell of a time last week. It has been awesome with more news about more partnerships and investors' agreement. It definitely seems like this year is going to be an endless stream of fantastic news throughout the year. In this episode of Dan, Rocky and Flair, I'm going to focus on DeFi protocols. This year is going to be a very intense, especially from a DeFi perspective with all the new protocols being released on Flare Network. I'll dedicate quite a lot of my time on DeFi with the aim to support the community uh, in how to use, invest, and do proper risk management on the various DeFi platforms on Flare Network. In this episode, I will start to do staking in, in Gnosis liquidity pools and have a look at how my previous staking in the Flare uh, Bones liquidity pool has been performing. Let's look at the numbers. Before we get started, please do remember to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification button so I can grow this channel and support you even more with Flare Network news, pro tips, tutorials, and information about Flare Network prospects of the future. Let's get started with looking at the most important news from last week. Last Friday, Flare announced that Flare's earliest investors have reinvested in the long-term future of the network in a groundbreaking new agreement. In addition to uh, extending token vesting and capping sales, they will reinvest 50% of any token sales back to, into Flare ecosystem projects. So this is really interesting. This is huge news. And I think we need to go a little bit further into the announcement to see what are the biggest takeaways from this? So the group of backers here, which are basically another word for the investors, are vol uh, voluntarily extending their token vesting period from 24 to Q126, and they have agreed to limit their token sales to a maximum of 0.5% of the 30-day daily average volume and then also to support sustained ecosystem growth and provide additional incentive for building, builders thinking of developing on the network. The backers have also committed to reinvest at least 50% of the proceeds of all token sales over the next two years back into the Flare ecosystem projects. At the current market valuation, the potential reinvestment into the ecosystem becomes 35 million US dollars. That's a pretty big amount, I would say. Very impressive. Going further down into the announcement, it's also very interesting to notice that early investors will receive their original agreed total of 2% of Flare token supply. However, these new terms represent a 68% reduction in upfront distribution, as well as a material lengthening of vesting and demonstrates to the community of builders and token holders how founders can align with investors to responsibly support a game-changing vision for the Flare network. And then I think also what we should really look into here is the projects that's actually being financed with this reinvestment. These 35 million US dollars are going into a number of very interesting projects. Many of them we already know about because it has been talked quite a lot about in the community. But I'm especially paying attention to synthetic assets here because that basically means that we are going to get real world assets projects into Flare Network. But also minting native state bitcoins here is very interesting because we have been talking about what solution we can expect with, res uh, with respect to stable coins. And a native um, solution here is definitely uh, worth appreciating. So really great, really interesting. And just a few more words on minting native stablecoins, because what does it actually mean that it's native? This means that stablecoin is directly integrated with the blockchain and uses its native mechanism for minting and redeeming. Unlike uh, non-native tokens that might be wrapped, a wrapped version of other assets, native stablecoins are built from the ground up for their specific chain this is fantastic news because it indicates that either Flare is getting its uh, uh, own stablecoin or a new partnership with a stablecoin issuer like Circle is on the rise, potentially making USDC native on Flare network. And if this happens, it is truly remarkable since uh, Circle, due to its size, is very 
picky about who they make a partnership with. They follow liquidity and compliance. Um, and why would it actually make sense that an issuer, a stablecoin issuer like Circle is uh, engaging in the partnership with uh, Flare Network? So that's something I uh, posted about the other day where I'm basically talking about compliance here because compl the compliance part is very important. Circle just dropped the Tron network due to compliance issues and challenges. And as you also can see here, that I'm basically posting stable coins are getting more importance and are seeing accelerated adoption. So they are also subject to increased scrutiny by authorities. And that's actually the reason why Circle has seen it necessary to drop the USDC support on Tron. So it's clear that these stablecoin issuers, they will be looking for more compliant and transparent networks like Flare, Flare Network. And as part of the F asset system, a stablecoin will be needed and it's going to be introduced in 24. That's for sure that we know. The question is, which one is it going to be? And I just still think, I think there's a really big likelihood now that we are going to see USDC coming in some way or another. All right, so to wrap up this announcement about a new investor agreement, I just want to say that reinvesting 35 million USD is a huge amount that's going into the ecosystem. This is a very strong signal from the investors that they believe in Flare Network from a long-term growth perspective. But furthermore, this is also super interesting It's a, because it's a reassurance that investors issued tokens are not dumped on the community, to be very honest with you. So this gives a lot of confidence and it's not un uncommon uh, practice in the crypto space that, that tokens from investors, early investors, that's basically also dumped very early on. But it's just very clear that it's a genuine pack of investors that we have here and they're really caring about the long-term commitment and growth of the Flare Network. So it's really fantastic. All right, and what we can, beside what we can expect from the stablecoin solution and partnership, from a high level perspective, we can now also connect the dots and conclude that more real world asset projects are coming to Flare Network. These real world assets, they act like financial instruments that mimic the value and performance of the other assets like stocks, commodities, currencies, and even other cryptocurrencies without actually requiring ownership of the underlying asset itself. And just to also put some words of these real world assets, they are tokenized derivatives built on chain platforms. They track the price movement of the underlying asset through various mechanisms like smart contracts and oracles and users can gain exposure to the price movement of these assets without needing to directly own or hold them. That's basically what synthetic assets is about. And it's coming now. It is really awesome. I can't believe how fast this network is growing. Moving on to the next interesting news of uh, last week was that a DeFi platform called Compound V2, which is basically an upgrade to the Compound Finance Protocol, which is a decentralized lending platform built on the Ethereum network. They just lost 3 million US dollars because the system failed to get fast enough Oracle price updates. And we, I, this is definitely something we see very often out there in the space. It might be an accident. It might be deliberately done in order to hack the system. In this case, it was actually a lot of bots that managed to, in a very short time frame, to create a lot of accounts and basically do the needed transaction to basically require this these funds from the lending platform before the new price update actually happened on the platform. But this issue is something that Flare Network fixes and it's just important for everybody to understand because it's one of the also one of the important value adds that Flare Network brings to the crypto space. And it's one more important reason why we need Flare Network Oracle system because the systems out there today, they are simply not fit to secure DeFi transactions. And this is basically what Flare Network is built for. It solves these challenges we have today. 
And the fact that Flare Network is solving these issues and actually delivering super fast updates to DeFi platforms, solving uh, many of the challenges that they are today, then a guy, an OG guy from the crypto space, Arthur Hayes, Hayes he actually also noticed this and uh, he realizes that Flat, uh, Flare Network is the upcoming network that will handle uh, such a thing like this. And he's going to write about it uh, in his uh, latest uh, blog. He's actually mentioning Flare Networks uh, as uh, uh, one of the network that you need to pay attention to with respect to our Oracle systems because they solve a lot of the problems that we see today with security and fast updates on a DeFi platform. So keep an eye on, on Arthur's uh, um, a block here because in the coming period, he's going to write uh, a lot more about Flare Networks. And he's a big guy out there. A lot of people are listening to him. So that's a lot of exposure to the Flare Networks as well. Next big news from last week is that Flare Network has partnered with XDFI. That's Futures uh, trading platform delivered by Centric Solutions. And that's the world's first compliant decentralized futures protocol. And it's using a KYC tokenization, which means that there's no centralized entity involved. This is also really, this is unprecedented actually, and very important in terms of being compliant and yeah, also really not relying on third parties here. And then the best part is that it's basically driven by Flare Time Series Oracles. But let's stick a bit more into the announcement itself. Okay, so Centric Solutions, who are these people behind that company? And these are actually Wall Street veterans and they have 25 years of experience building solutions for basically Wall Street. So as we can see here who they are, so it says that Centric Solutions has spent a quarter of a century building the world's largest trading engines for firms like Merrill Lynch, Fidelity, Goldman Sachs, and Morgan Stanley. And they have a passion for blockchain and finance that led the team towards enterprise-grade, scalable solution for brands and entities operating in the Web3 world. I think it's really great to have Centric Solutions on board here in a partnership with Flare Network because we need, obviously, we need people with experience to build advanced platforms like a futures trading platform on Flare Network that requires a bit of skills and expertise and a lot of experience. So it's great to see these guys are coming into a cooperation with Flare Networks. One of the special things on this platform is that it's building on some new technology that has not been used before this way and yeah, if we look at the f uh, paragraph here, it says that with regulatory uncertainty, still an impediment to larger scale institutional investment in DeFi, XDFI represents a uh, welcome position for major investors. The protocol's third party know your customer tokenization, KYCT, ensures 100% confidence that futures contracts positions are purchased in a fully compliant manner. This is very important because everything uh, needs to be more co uh, compliant uh, if you want to connect with uh, uh, the established financial world trade fi. So uh, this is welcome. And it ensures that all P2P matches between long and short term positions are only between eligible counterparties. This KYCT approach is the first of its kind for DeFi, ensuring full compliance without this centralized intermediate broker or custodian. What's also interesting, if we scroll a little further down here, is to see that Flare Time Series Oracles is playing a crucial role again here. It's a cornerstone of XDFIs, is its FTSO-driven futures market, where in contracts are purchased and settled with every 24 hours in conjunction with cloud-optimized Routing algorithms, this feature supports on-chain limit and market-style orders for futures contracts between peers, representing a significant leap forward in DeFi instruments. So this will initially support Coin and Ethereum futures contracts, but the protocol will soon expand to other FTSOs enable digital assets such as XRP or Dodge, 
as well as traditional commodities, crude oil, gold, natural gas, corn, copper, silver, and others. So truly amazing to see that all these traditional commodities are now coming on a chain to be traded on Flare Networks. That's really fantastic, unbelievable. Looking into what we can expect from the reward structure, we can see that it's a fee splitting mechanism that rewards community members for their referrals based on a contract purchase activity and referrals generation and a purchase weight voice in the setting of the tick radio, a concept utilized in traditional futures markets for setting contract settlement amounts as a function of the underlying price chain. So with these initiatives, Centric Solution hopes to incentivize community participants and also foster a sense of ownership amongst users as the protocols for popularity grows and experienced users become more familiar with the trading mechanism, the fee sharing and governance initiatives will solidify XDFIs as a leader in shaping the future of DeFi. And then the last thing down here, very interesting also to notice if you want to participate in the testing ahead of the main net launch, uh, the protocol with, uh, will have a debut on Flare's testnet, Custom 2, enabling users to engage, provide feedback and gain valuable insights in an interactive environment. And uh, you can definitely count on me being there. And if you're not doing it yourself, I will definitely be paying attention to this and uh, have some tutorials and online, you could say online testing as part of my YouTube uh, episodes that are uh, coming up on uh, this channel. All right, so before we move on to the next news of last week, I just want to um, conclude on a few things here and why uh, XDFI coming on to Flare Network is such a big thing um, yeah, in the first place. And that's because with this Futures DeFi platform is built to bring in institutional investors. So this is basically about mainstream adoption. So this includes hedge funds, investment banks, and other large financial institutions who use futures as part of their investment strategies, but also for hedgers who use futures to lock in prices for future purchases or sales, who aim to minimize risk from price fluctuations in their core business. And examples of this would be, for instance, uh, airline companies uh, buying uh, uh, oil futures. So in essence, we are not uh, just talking about mainstream adoption anymore. We are not just talking about it. In 2024, we will have a compliant DeFi platform on Flare Network to facilitate futures trading that can accelerate mainstream adoption and potentially bring in vast amounts of liquidity to Flare Network. That's fantastic. So as a community member, you might be thinking, should I participate in this and uh, what are the risks involved and so on. And uh, I would say participating in uh, this platform and investing in futures that definitely requires some practice due to the complexity in general. It is uh, in general more complex. Futures involve contracts with specific expiry dates and leverage. And it's uh, adding layers of complexity compared to buying and holding stocks, for instance. But it also has higher potential returns. Leverage allows for amplified profits, but also magnified losses, of course. It can also be used to, to go short. Unlike stocks, you can profit from prices decline in futures. Yeah. If you want to explore this area, then follow me on YouTube when I drill into the fi this financial instrument on XDFI and show you how to do this best practice along with my recommendations. The last thing I want to ad address with respect to the XDFI platform is the question whether you can hold and trade uh, the native token on the platform. And as you can see here uh, from the post by uh, Santiago, who is our main man behind uh, Centric uh, Solution, is that you cannot because uh, they don't really have a token uh, other than um, a governance token. But the governance token that they have is purely from a governance perspective. It is actually going to be issued and burned afterwards in uh, combination with an improvement proposal. 
You cannot transfer it, you cannot trade it, and you will only get it so your voice can be heard when new proposals are coming up for improvements on the DeFi platform. All right, next interesting topic from last week is coming from Kinetic. Kinetic, the upcoming borrowing and lending platform coming to Player Network this year, has revealed more about their tokenomics in spite of the fact that the white paper isn't out yet. One of the intriguing aspects of this DeFi platform is that they are going to use F assets as part of their product portfolio. Let's have a look at the latest information that was revealed and released publicly lately. And that's revealed in this article from Genfinity. And Genfinity recently connected with JG Gagnon, who is a co-founder of Rome Blockchain Labs, and Jake from Kinetics, who is also a core contributor. And they met in this uh, podcast where this article you see here is basically a resume of that the podcast. They dove into Flare Network's capabilities and how this collaboration may affect our future in interacting with the blockchain. So that's actually super interesting. Let's drill down to the interesting paragraph here that talks about the to tokenomics on, on Kinetic's uh, borrowing and lending platform. And here they're actually revealing a, a lot of new interesting information about uh, the native token on the Kinetic platform, the dual token. The dual token serves as the core currency within the Kinetic protocol. Imagine it as the primary uh, buying and selling token used for various functionalities. You can stake your dual token to earn key tokens, which unlock governance voting power within the protocol. Every 45 days, these key token holders participate in crucial governance rules that shape the future of Kinetic. This unique two token system sets Kinetic apart from other DeFi protocols. Staking dual for key tokens grant your access to rewards, but your active participation in voting is mandatory to claim them. And this incentivizes active community engagement and fosters a sense of ownership among users. Moreover, the tokenomics are designed to resist downward price pressure often faced by reward tokens, encouraging your long-term investment through the voting requirements. Now, this is interesting from a risk perspective if you want to invest in and hold dual and key tokens, especially if you want to place them in liquidity pools to earn additional rewards. This approach definitely reduces the risk of impermanent loss in liquidity pools and in general add to the token's appreciation over time. Stay tuned, this DeFi platform is released and I will make the necessary tutorials and risk assessments needed for the community. Now let's look at some real staking on the Innosis platform. Following up from last week on the uh, Blockbones token, as you probably uh, know, I have been playing around with the Blockbones project and I wanted to start staking the native Blockbones token being set in the Innosis liquidity pool that became available on the 14th of February. Now let's follow up on the performance uh, from that position I started uh, 11 days ago. In this spreadsheet you see here, you can see uh, that I'm keeping track of the performance of the pool. And you can see the 14th of uh, February, that's where I started staking in this Flare block bones liquidity pool on uh, the Gnosis platform. And you can see that I basically started with 500 Flare, it's a combination of 500 Flare and 1,327.25 block bones token. And so you could say I started with a, a total value of uh, that liquidity pool of $32. So just a small amount here. Remember, it's just a small amount uh, to showcase this, to show you the performance at the end of the day. What is important to show here is how it's performing. And that means in percentage wise, what is the impermanent gain or the impermanent loss. Also, you have to remember when you do this comparison, you have to think about what would you have done if you have not staken in a liquidity pool. And what I do here, what I always do when I do these comparisons is that I compare to a scenario where I'm basically just holding flair instead of uh, staking it in, in a liquidity pool like this. So that's how we compare what we say. 
how do, do we do compared to if we basically didn't do anything else but just holding our flare? So the 25th of uh, February, I'm basically uh, making a new line here. I'm uh, claiming the tokens that I have uh, accrued over the time. That's basically the block bonus token that you are accruing in this pool. And uh, we are going to do a breakup to see how we are doing from this date onwards. And now we can see that the amount of layer has basically gone a little bit down and uh, the amount of lock bones that has been uh, going up. You can see that I have been uh, claiming uh, 46 block bones uh, as a reward. And you can also see that now the value of the liquidity pool has been gone, uh, going up to $42.13. So it looks really good, right? Compared to how it was 11 days ago, this looks uh, quite good. But is it actually uh, that good? That's something we will look at now. But if we scroll further out here, we can actually see, and that's the most interesting part here, is that if we calculate, do the calculation here, and you say, okay, what would the value of our flare have been if we didn't go into the liquidity, if we had just been holding flare, then because of the immense price increase we saw the last couple of days here, the value of our flare would now be those thousand flare would now be 46 us dollars so that means that we have actually lost we have actually lost on this position in spite of the fact that you can see that we did get some rewards also that amounted to 65 cent then we actually come to an impermanent loss of three dollars and 22 cents here and that adds up to uh, an impermanent loss of 7% so far in this liquidity pool. And now you're thinking, okay, that might not be so good. And from a short-term short -term perspective, that's not so good, agreed. But I think it's very important to understand when you go into, you stake into liquidity pools, you really need a long-term perspective. Because if you are very short-term, you are very vulnerable to apply strong price fluctuations. And it's actually becoming uh, a bit risky uh, doing this. Okay, so from a short-term perspective, uh, higher risk here. Uh, but if we look from a, a longer perspective, which I uh, really recommend that you do, if you go into these liquidity pools, you do it because you believe in that token. You believe that that token is going to appreciate in price extensively over even over a year maybe two years it's you should definitely do this if you uh, believe in it from a longer term uh, perspective and you trust that this platform is going to uh, deliver a lot of value if we look specifically at the bnz tokens then they are actually deflationary they will be it's designed in such a way that a lot of them will be burned going forward the supply, the total supply is 100 million tokens, and they are also having a lot of utility, these tokens, because they're actually used to buy trades in the trade shop on the Blockbones website. And they, I definitely expect a large number of those tokens to be spent in the trade shop. Um, and, and as I also said, it's um, uh, a portion of the BNZ that's spent in the uh, trade store are uh, destined for the crematorium, as it's called. So it's basically burned forever. So conclude on this, I want to say that obviously I believe in the block bones token here, and I think it's going to impress the community a lot with how it's going to perform and appreciate over time. But it will take time and we will also see some price fluctuation over time here. So this position in this liquidity pool here is uh, definitely something that I'm going to keep for quite some time. And I will also uh, keep presenting it to you so you can follow the progress and uh, see when we are actually starting to uh, make some impermanent gain here before we are actually taking it out as profit. If you move uh, further down and we look at some of the other liquidity pools on the Enosis platform, it's interesting to look at them individually to make an evaluation of what are the risks involved in having a position in one of these pools here 
So let's talk a little bit about the principles of risk management in liquidity pools. So the principle is, number one, is that as soon as one side of a pair token change value compared to the other, then in permanent laws is likely inflicted uh, depending on what kind of uh, initial strategy you have. So when you talk about in permanent laws, you are actually you have to look at what you what you would you have done if you didn't stake. What was the scenario, right? Because otherwise you don't have anything to compare it up to. You can actually got you can have a moving position in one side of a liquidity pool where one of the tokens is going up more than the other and still make money on it. Actually, you cannot call it an impermanent and loss because it depends on what you have done if you didn't stake. Uh, so that's number one. Um, but what are the main risk factors in liquidity pools? So another thing that we also have to keep in mind here is that if we have one of the tokens that's subjected to airdrop, which means inflation is going up drastically, that's definitely also having an impact on impermanent laws because it means that people will likely dump their airdrop into the liquidity pool. Pairs with high correlation that goes up and down together are less vulnerable for impermanent laws. So if they go together, uh, they are very uh, fixated together, the pairs, then you it's also a more safe choice. Uh, pools with uh, stable coins are also less risky uh, uh, since only one side of uh, uh, the pool will uh, basically tend to have volatility. Um, so if you want to if you want to go with less risk, obviously also less opportunity for rewards. But less risk, then you have to go with liquidity pools where the tokens, the token pair, are from tokens that are basically having a tight correlation. They follow each other up and down. Uh, or you can also choose one with a stable coin that's also giving more security. You could say uh, it's less riskier at least. And then if you com combine that with a very high yield, then we are uh, good to go. That's definitely making it interesting for me. Looking at candidates uh, of liquidity pools, uh, where I'm going to stake next, I have my eyes fixated on the Apsis uh, USDT, EUSDT pool here. And uh, that's because when I look at it, I see a very good potential, a very attractive risk reward radio here. And yeah, so what are the reasons why it is actually quite interesting? Looking at Apsis uh, price development over the last couple of months, we can basically see that it has been some quite hectic and intense period <clears throat> where it has decreased quite significantly. And uh, yeah, that's because as of now in this early stage, it's, it doesn't really have so much utility for the holders. They earn it as reward in the liquidity pools, and then many people are selling it immediately. Then we basically see this uh, depreciation. But what's also interesting is that it basically seems like it has bottomed out now. And that means that I think Axis is very much pri primed to see a significant appreciation in price. Let's remember that Axis is a very scarce token and it's uh, also going to have a lot of exposure to other networks going forward as uh, it's the plan of Hypnosis to basically expand to quite a lot of other networks. So I think now is actually a very good time to start paying attention to Axis, but also Helium. Both of them are interesting. But I want to uh, especially go with Axis now. And the reason for that is basically because uh, right now the yield, the rewards that we are getting from this liquidity pool is the highest. It's significantly higher than the others. Right now it's 173%. Um, so that makes it a more attractive choice. And then also the combination with a stable coin, which means that it's a less, less Riskier choice makes me want to go with this one for the next position in a liquidity pool. All right, so decision has been made. So I'm going to stake a thousand flare in this liquidity pool here, the Apsis EUSDT liquidity pool with yearly APY of 176% right now. That's really good. And also, yeah, as you can see, just as a reminder that the reward we're going to earn here 
is going to be abscess in abscess. Okay, later this week, I'm going to make you all a tutorial on how to stake. Step by step, I'm going to show you exactly how we are staking into this liquidity pool. If you are in doubt of that, you can go and check that out. I will release it in the middle of this week. In the next episode of Dan Rocky on Flare, we are going to make a comparison and we are going to see how this pool has actually been performing. It's difficult to say in these times how it will be performing because Flare is really skyrocketing and really outperforming anything even on a coin market cap. But Apsis will, and Helium for that matter will also ha have its time. And I, I think you will also be surprised to see that how well these pools are actually doing over time. We start the staking now and uh, following them uh, week by week, where we will likely see that Flare is outperforming from a short term perspective. What I'm expecting is that from a longer term perspective, over the next coming year, where we are following this pool, you will actually start to see that Axis is outperforming even Flare. That's obviously the aim. And with this kind of yield that we have now in this pool, I think there's a very good there's a very good chance that we will see that Axis is outperforming Flare sooner than later. Just as a reminder for all of you, from a short-term perspective, placing liquidity in liquidity pools, that's always uh, high risky. Do remember, this is not a financial advice when I'm showing you how to do this and I'm actually adding liquidity into the liquidity pool. Don't just jump right into staking because you have seen me doing this. Follow me the coming weeks where we each week follow up on performance and then make then you can make a decision after following the performance for some while, well, you think it makes sense to go into this position. That's it for this episode of Dan, Rocky and Flair. Stay tuned for more exciting stuff in the DeFi space. I'm going to follow up on this. Uh, more videos are coming out uh, even this week. And uh, then we'll continue to follow up on uh, everything that I've been staking in the on the various platforms going forward. Yeah. And as always, all the links to the sites that I've been presenting in this vid can be found down below if you're interested in going into more details. Until I see you again, have a great party out there in the Flare and, and Songbird space. It's, it's an awesome time to witness and be part of. And yeah, I just love it. Until the next, have a great time and see you out there in the space.